Hello, and welcome to the Frostburg Experience. I'm JJ Jones. On today's show, we will be learning about several student organizations on Frostburg's campus. We'll learn about some of the events they put on, how you can get involved, and how you can start your very own student organization. Later on, Renee Poffenberger will talk to us about CREW, a faith-based student organization. Then, members of the FSU Bobcat Ambassador staff will join us in the studio. We will talk to them about their different experiences representing the school at campus events. Finally, we will discuss the benefits of the liberal studies major here at FSU. But first, let's look at how students can create their own student organization. With a simple look at the process, here's field reporter Rachel Rochella. Frostburg State University is home to over 160 student and Greek organizations. The list can be found on Bobcat Connect, but if a student can't find an organization to join, then they can opt to start a new one. The Office of Student Activities and Greek Life's Program Assistant, Sarah Bernhardt, says how to start the process to form a new student organization. Yeah, so for student organizations to start, um, you need a group of people, you need at least eight students, you need to have an advisor for your organization, and you have to develop a constitution. Um, and then after that, you know, we just, in the office, we verify that, you know, you have a legitimate cause. We also check to see if your organization would overlap any of the other ones that we already have existing on campus. And then once you go through that process, you're pretty much good to start. Student organizations may be started at any point during the year. Bernhardt elaborates on this issue. We've had students who will come at the end of maybe the winter semester to start for the spring. We, and we have students pop up in the middle kind of wondering how they can get established. So there really is no, I guess, time that students can start an organization, but it kind of depends on you and your timeline. Founder of the Caribbean Students Association, Afri Turner, says what her organization is about. Uh, so the Caribbean Students Association, um, that's the name of my organization, and the purpose is to teach Frostburg, the community and the campus, about Caribbean culture and just make, make the Caribbean Students Association like a place where you can come and feel welcomed and feel like you're basically at home. Turner explains her process for starting the association. Ed, um, like a table, like a recruitment table, and then once we like got people signed up, it was um, pretty much from there. I just went to Amy Fines, who was working here at the time, and Coop, and um, they told me about the process. I had to have an advisor for that, and so she, um, Amy, was like my stand-in advisor for the time. And then, um, yeah, pretty much just set up my Bobcat Connect, added the people, and then from then we just started having meetings. Thing, mm -hmm. the hardest part about starting an organization is getting people that initially sign up to come back. Student organizations bring individuals that have similar interests together. Starting an organization is a relatively simple process and can help to develop lifelong friendships in college. The Student Activities and Greek Life Office is the place to go if you have an idea for a new student organization. For the Frostburg Experience, I'm Rachel Rochella. Thanks, Rachel. It's great to see how supportive FSU is of students pursuing their individual passions. Later, we'll, t we'll talk with Renee Poffenberger about her organization crew. Please stay with us. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him going on to fascinate millions with his talent, one in 260,000. The odds of this born racer having 157 career top 10 finishes in NASCAR, one in 125 billion. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year, one in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, one in 110. I'm NASCAR driver Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Lead paint poisoning affects one million children today. If you're pregnant or have young children and your home was built before 1978, you could be at risk. Learn how to protect your family. To find your home's danger zones, the health effects, or just to find help, 
Log on to leadfreekids.org. We are now joined in the studio with Renee Poffenberger. Renee is an officer of the student organization CREW. Thanks for being here, Renee. Thanks for having me, JJ. Can you tell me a little bit about CREW and how it became, how it evolved to what it is now on campus? Sure. CREW is a Christian organization on campus, and our mission is to know God, to grow and make followers of God, and to go and serve Him. How did you get involved with CREW? I've been involved since my freshman year on campus. Uh, there's two ways that I got involved. First, word of mouth. A friend of a friend told me, as well as I saw all the chalking during Blitz Week. Okay. Um, what does CREW do to recruit its new members? We have a lot of methods, as I just mentioned, the Blitz Week during the first week of the semester. Uh, we go out and we chalk on campus the day before, which we usually meet on Thursdays. We also make coffee and muffins for students on campus to just welcome them back to school, as well as hand out free uh, school supplies. Well, that sounds fun. Um, as an organization uh, at FSU, what would you like to do to make CREW a more widely known organization? I actually have a couple ideas on that. Uh, first, I would love to utilize technology and social media by creating videos of personal testimonies of our students currently in CREW. I think that's a great way to get, one, our name out, and two, also just share the gospel with other people. Additionally, I would continue to bring in large speakers, such as the one we're going to have next semester, Michael Crawford, who's from the Maryland-Delaware Baptist Convention, and he'll be coming in to speak on whether or not Christianity is a white man's religion. In the next few years, how do you see the future of crew growing? We are currently growing each year. I see crew growing. I would like to continue with our evangelism efforts as well as our outreach. This year, we were able to go to the Bruce Outreach Center and uh, serve the local community, and we were able to bring other crew members on, on board with that. Additionally, I would like to serve the campus more so that they know of crew and know that we are here to care for them. Sounds awesome. Uh, thanks for joining us, Renee. I'll be sure to keep an eye out for more cruise events on campus. When we get back, we'll be hearing from field reporter Marla Porter about one of our flourishing student organizations. We'll also talk with members of the Bobcat Ambassador staff. Please stay tuned. can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back. We'll be speaking with James and Carmen soon. But first, channeling your passion into a student organization can create new opportunities for students to flourish. With a report about one of FSU's creative organizations, here's Marlon Pointer. Fashion, a form of art that is unique for every culture, an art form that promotes individuality and unity with different trends and styles. Frostburg State University student Paris Bell and Paparazzi Perfect President puts together shows displaying astonishing works of fashion and skilled modeling. We do runway modeling, choreo, um, things with like twists and turns that you see in our runway. Modeling is an expression of art, mostly with it involving a lot of um, choreography and we do photo shoots and stuff like that. This year we actually did a photo shoot with like paint and glitter and like the color of the rainbow. Like, I don't know, we try to get creative on a budget so it's, it's definitely art put into there. It's definitely a lot of creative thoughts that's put into the show. So it's a production. The amount of work that goes into planning the routines of the show, 
preparing the design of the runway and coordinating with fashion designers is very extensive. However, the effort that goes into the show pays off with entertaining results and high production value. I'm looking for paparazzi in the future because in the modeling, like this type of modeling style in general, it's grown so much. Like people are, as people evolve in dancing, people evolve in what you can do in heels overall. Like there is starting to be a lot of heel dance class and maybe it can evolve into that. Um, for the future of paparazzi and what I would say to people in the future is, I think that you should just expand it. Um, we have like bylaws and stuff like that that tell you what the guidelines of your org is to be. But you know, don't stop being creative. Don't stop putting your own mind to that because it's your team at the end of the day for future presidents. For the Frostburg Experience, I'm Marlon Pointer. Thank you, Marlon. Be sure to watch out for more paparazzi's events here on campus. We're now joined in the studio by Bobcat Ambassadors James Kirk and Carmen Moore. Thank you both for being here today. No problem. You're welcome. Could you first tell me a little bit about your involvement here on campus? Well, I'm very involved with the student government here on campus. I serve as the vice president of the student government right now, and I'm going to serve as the president in the upcoming school year. Interesting. And then I'm involved with FACI, and that means the Frostburg Association for the Education of Young Children. I'm also involved with the Ladybugs, bugs meaning building, uplifting, and guiding our sisters. And then I'm also in the National Council of Negro Women. Ooh, interesting. So Carmen, why did you want to become a Bobcat Ambassador? I wanted to become a Bobcat Ambassador because I really wanted to work on my public speaking skills. And then I really wanted to work on my response time for like answering questions because I know I can be a little bit slow. So James, what's the process of becoming a Bobcat Ambassador? So the process for becoming a Bobcat Ambassador typically starts with an application or a nomination. You fill out a paper application, email it into the Office of Admissions, and then if you make it to the next round, then you do an in-person interview mm -hmm. with our admissions staff in Pullen Hall, and then from that point, then you are either um, selected or denied as a Bobcat Ambassador. Okay, interesting. Why do you believe Bobcat Ambassadors are an important members of the admissions team? I think being a Bobcat Ambassador is really important because for a lot of prospective students coming to Frostburg, they really want to know what the student experience is really like and they really value hearing that from an actual student as opposed to just a faculty member or a staff member from the admissions office. Okay. Carmen, with Open House being one of your main responsibilities, can you tell us a little bit of an Open House event, how that would go on campus? Okay, so Open House, it starts off with we have different ambassadors taking on different roles and jobs. So first it starts with ambassadors either, either helping out in the parking lot or showing um, people where like to go different places and tour on the campus and then after that that's at 10 o'clock that's when the open house officially starts and so that's when we have the speakers come and speak about the school and then we also have a student panel and that's nice because the, the prospective students and parents get to have a student's idea about the school after that, they have two academic sessions that they can go to and they can learn about their majors. And then finally, they have their tours that us ambassadors provide them with. Okay. Are there any other obligations on campus you have as a Bobcat ambassador? Um, so I am also a telemarketer. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays nights, I call um, prospective students and I ask them a couple of questions. Um, I answer their questions that they have also because they could be nervous or scared about becoming a freshman in college. So that's the only other thing at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we've all been there. But I, just want, I want to ask both of you, do you guys have a favorite memory um, giving tours on campus as a Bobcat ambassador? Okay, so one of my favorite memories, because I have so many and I'll make so many more, but um, my favorite memory thus far has been when I was still trying to, I was in the training to become an ambassador mm -hmm. still, and this was my second tour. And this one guy and his family, they were from around like my county, Montgomery County, and he had an interest in my first original major, which was athletic training. Mm -hmm. And so I was just trying to give him tips about, you know, how to, cause he's gonna be playing football too. So how to manage his time on the field and study hall and video like practice and tapes that he'll have to, go through and all that different type of stuff. So I was just trying to give him tips 
on the athletic training major and then still try to focus on his schoolwork at the same time. And then I was like, you better invite me over for dinner too because, <laughs> you know, we seem cool already, so. <laughs> I think one of my favorite memories is being a Bobcat ambassador was I was given a tour in an open house with a group of families and I actually found out that one of the um, moms on the tour or someone was visiting had actually lived in the same hall um, in a residence hall with my mom when they were both in college. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of cool to see kind of the next generation of kind of Frostburg State students coming and looking at the campus. Your mom went here? Yes, yes. Oh, that's cool. So how do, you, how do you think being a Bobcat ambassador has prepared you for life after graduation? I think being a Bobcat ambassador really helps you kind of develop a lot of your personal skills, mm -hmm. um, public speaking, communicating, networking, talking with new people, kind of going outside of your comfort zone to be able to just kind of interact with a lot of different types of people. And I think that can be really beneficial for um, after graduation in the professional world. Please stay tuned as we continue to explore more opportunities for students to become involved on campus. So I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who do something, the people who take action, are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Welcome back to the show. Later, stay with us to learn more about our very own liberal studies program. But first, let's hear from Marlon Pointer as he tells us about another opportunity for FSU students. Good times with friends at fun events is one of the best parts of college. At Frostburg State University, President Jennifer Schofield of UPC the University Programming Council works hard to plan these type of events that you and your friends can enjoy. So we plan Spring Fest and we plan Back to School Picnic, Welcome Week, Frostburg's Got Talent, oh and we do movies. One of UPC's annual events and one of the favorites of the campus is Spring Fest. Spring Fest includes obstacle courses, vendors, food, fun, and games. During Spring Fest, students are able to relax and have fun before finals approach and then the summer vacation begins. However, as with all student organizations, there are some difficulties that UPC faces. The hardest part is students want to see certain things and we can't always give them everything that they want. And it's not that we don't want to, it's so many things that come into play of budget, contracts. We have a school lawyer who, if they tell us we can't do an event, we can't do it. If you're interested in being a part of UPC, there are plenty of chances for your comments and ideas to be used for future events on Frostburg State's campus. We have uh, weekly meetings every Monday at 7 o'clock in Lane 113, and it's our paid staff, but we encourage members to come out. So we have like members who come, and they'll come every week, and they can help us on a volunteer basis. If they're passionate about planning events or even just trying to give students something to do on campus, come and give us ideas, get involved, and then we usually hire from our members um, if they're interested. For the Frostburg Experience, I'm Marlon Pointer. Thank you, Marlon. Giving FSU students the opportunity to plan their events for fellow Bobcats is a great idea. We will now be hearing from Rachel Rochella reporting on the great things about the liberal studies major. With 48 different undergraduate programs, Frostburg State University offers opportunities for all students. 
For those who want to explore multiple subjects but still would like to stay at Frostburg, the Liberal Studies program could be of interest. Liberal Studies is a self-design major. It builds on the foundation of academic integrity already existing in programs throughout the university. Students in the Liberal Studies major can choose classes from many areas of study. Classes can be taken from two or more different programs of study that one may choose to focus in. Program coordinator Dr. Tom Sigerstad says that some students choose this major because they may have different goals. Students need to have a plan A and oftentimes they need to have a plan B. So if they're, you know, wanting to get ahead a little faster or if they've got some different goals that aren't exactly met by their plan A, then plan B gives them another option. Sigerstad addresses the program's capstone courses to help prepare students to transition from the academic field to the workforce. The liberal studies program has kind of a dual capstone. One of the capstones is a kind of a traditional internship field experience, maybe a special topics or independent study course. And the other capstone is one where we call it the career transition capstone. We want students to think about what it is they're going to do out there after their undergraduate degree. And some of the students are thinking about grad school. Others are thinking about entering the workforce right away. So what we want them to do in that course is think about their focus of study. You know, how do all of these courses tie together? How is that going to prepare them for the work world? Liberal Studies student Laura Amen says what the program has done to help her academic journey. Uh, it's giving me a chance to go back to elementary education. Mm -hmm. I, a dream that I thought was killed and I didn't think I was going to be able to go back to it. And it was like the universe was coming back into play and saying that I was destined to be a teacher. Liberal Studies student Tasha Baker says how Liberal Studies was brought to her attention. I had not initially thought about Liberal Studies. Um, another professor on campus um, put the idea on my head and then the more I looked into it and talked with Dr. Segerstad, I realized that it was the right switch for me. If students are interested in more information on this program, Dr. Sigerstad is available to answer questions. Liberal studies can help non-traditional students by giving them a faster track to graduation and regular students by giving them options if they are struggling to figure out what to study. For the Frostburg Experience, I'm Rachel Rochella. Great stuff, Rachel. It's always important to know what different academic path FSU students can choose to take. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have today. A special thank you to our studio guests, Renee Poffenberger, James Kirk, and Conrad Moore for joining us in the studio to talk about their organizations and for sharing their experiences about Frostburg's campus. I thank you as well to field reporters Marlon Porter and Rachel Rochella for their stories. I'm JJ Jones. Thanks for joining us and be sure to catch the next episode of the Frostburg Experience.